What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Very special video today. We are going to be discussing Bond 26, Global James Bond Day, and the future of the franchise. I've got three really good friends of mine on. We've got Ryan from Analyze This Mr. Bond, Mark from Views from Mark, and the man himself, Joe Darlington from Being James Bond, who today, as you are watching this, and I am talking to you, is celebrating 17 years of being James Bond. So congratulations to Joe on that. Hell of a run. He's doing a great job. Can't wait to see what he keeps doing. Was fortunate enough to have him join me, Mark and Ryan, to discuss Bond and its future. I hope you guys enjoy. Before we get going, I wanted to tell you, gentlemen, thank you, Joe Darlington, being James Bond, Ryan, analyze this, Mr. Bond, new channel, and of course, Mark, views from Mark. Thank you guys for doing this. I appreciate it big time. This is the first thank time you. all four of us have been doing, have done anything like this, I think. Yep. In this little yeah, group. Definitely. Yeah. So the, the topic I wanted to pose was Global James Bond Day came and went. Mark and I have kind of privately discussed this a little on voice memo over DM, which prime emphasis on the private because probably shouldn't say what we say on here, but global James bond day. And I think Mark actually put it very well on one of his lives was that's that one day of the year where it's not necessarily ignorant to expect bond news, but when it comes and goes with no, new bond, no new director, no title, no nothing. How do you guys feel on that day? Do you still, I mean, I, I know we have a certain expectation that's been set, especially through the Craig era, but do you have that kind of boyhood fandom that still like kind of hopes? Where are you guys at with something like Global James Bond Day in big bond news? Who wants to tackle that one first? <laughs> I, I, I can jump in. I so you know, I I think I'm always excited for, for Global James Bond Day and have been when we've had the past few. And realistically speaking, I, I was a cynic going into that day and I had even commented to that that effect on Instagram that I didn't expect we were gonna get real James Bond film announcement. It just didn't seem like that was in the ether. Usually you get some uh, more substantial rumors in the buildup to a Bond film coming out about those conversations really taking flight. And it didn't feel like we had that momentum in a way we could really uh, feel confident about this year. But I still hoped we would get something, maybe uh, something light, light, like a stay tuned for more information, maybe just uh, a sort of, even just a feeling that there was some real coordination behind what's going on with the brand and franchise overall. Like there are a lot of ancillary things that are going on uh, in the world of Bond beyond just the development of Bond 26. And I, I, I hope to see something along those lines. And uh, uh, it was a little disappointing when the day came and went with as, as little as we got, at mm -hmm. least from my perspective. Yeah. How about you, Mark? What is it? What's the perspective for you from the UK, the hotbed of it all? Well, I think I'm trying to remember what I said on my live because I was drinking. So it was a happy hour, <laughs> but it was. And I mean, at the end of the day, why wouldn't you drink? Let's be honest. But I mean, I was surprised and I wasn't at the same time in that you hope that there's be some kind of news because I think it, as I said, you know, if there's going to be news, you can kind of pin it on Global James Bond Day as being the perfect time to announce something. Even if it is director has finally been picked and signed on, because that's basically where everything's going to begin. When we do starting news, it will be the director's been picked. They will be instrumental in the casting process, casting whoever it is that turns out to be the next Bond, etc., etc. So... If you were going to pick a day to do it, it would be Global James Bond Day. Now, we didn't get nothing. I mean, we got a TV show, which I'm keeping an open mind about. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the film news, 
it would have been great to have something, but you know, uh, I think Ryan's right. We would have had a few rumblings about something other than the usual clickbait articles of oh so and so has heard this from an unverified unnamed source that is going to be this director doing this 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 you know we always get that but yeah it was it was a mix i i was kind of surprised and not surprised at the same time if that makes sense yeah how about you joe um well for me you know again uh luke you know this i mean i i have a couple bond buddies who were you know, relatively often texting too. And so of course, when the day came, it was like, Hey, you know, happy James Bond day, everybody. And, and a couple guys would say, so do you think we'll get some big announcement today? Mm -hmm. And I, um, and I kind of go, you are adorable. You just, you just, <laughs> you stay the sweet, innocent little guy you are. Um, no, I really was not expecting much. So I, I was not exactly disappointed. Um, and, and it, I, I think, like Mark said, you, you you can sort of feel, you know, you you sort of just put your ear to the ground, and you sort of already know if there's going to be some rumblings and if something right. is happening. And I I think it's pretty safe to say that there wasn't much happening this year, and, and I I think still isn't much happening right now. Um, so I really was not expecting much. In fact, I even sometimes start to get the feeling that. Eon. I mean, he, he, I, I think even the most cynical of us, we're, we're hoping maybe there's mm -hmm. an intern over at Eon who says, hey, isn't today that day? Shouldn't we just put something out to say hello or something? But no. Uh, but um, I, I sometimes get the vibe from Eon. I think that, look, look just because we we, we did we made a big hoopla on this day a couple of years ago doesn't really mean we were going to treat it like a national holiday every year. Um, so I think, I think at this point, it's really more the fans – who take that that opportunity to say hey and and you know kind of get excited and put out something and you know remember that it's James Bond day and pop in a video etc. Right. So um, so yeah, I, I can't say I was expecting a whole lot. I, I think we're probably still sort of in that time frame where Eon is just kind of tired, you know, and and yeah. probably yeah. not ready to move yet, and and we're still sort of waiting to see what the next step is going to be. So. That segues wonderfully into some of the notes I have taken. I've come prepared today. So No Time to Die was released technically September 30th, 2021. Original release date was actually way back in 2019. And then it was postponed multiple times with director change and things like that. And then, of course, with COVID. So you could hypothetically look at it and say this movie could have been in the can like end of summer heading into autumn 2019. So when you look at it in that sense, and we're heading into almost 2024, do you, because Joe, I mean, I think we can all agree. We do think Eon might be a little exhausted. They're, you know, giving the Daniel Craig era a little time to have its time to shine, which, you know, I personally think that's, long done i know daniel craig's long moved on um do, do you feel like obviously all three of you do you feel four years going on four and a half five is a long time to not even have picked the actor i mean at this point it's not even about the next film it's where are you going with the franchise from here on out i can jump in there first i i mean first off i do want to give give some a disclaimer that like COVID time is very weird in the sense that it felt like a very long period of time. And then right. also can feel like a very short period of time when you look back on it. So this, this movie coming out during COVID creates a weird sense of me gauging exactly when this movie released, we were looking forward to it for a very long time. And then it finally came out. And even then time has been kind of weird. We haven't seen as many big movies coming out in the way that it felt like we used to. I used to kind of almost like count where I was at any given time in my life by what movies were out in the theater at that time. And it hasn't really felt like that for the past number of years for me. So in some ways it, it feels, if you actually look at it in terms of logistically, it feels like a very long period of time to not have movement. Um, mm -hmm. 
But I think in terms of like a personal life, in terms of like, if I were to just reflect on, okay, No Time to Die came out, like actually closing the cycle of No Time to Die from like the time I bought the Blu-ray, let's put it that way. Like, like that's the real end of the promotional cycle for No Time to Die, so to speak. It doesn't feel like it's been that long to me personally since that exact moment happened. And if we're going to say... um. We've talked a little bit about Eon feeling tired. And I, I remember, and I, I've been looking for the quote because I remember reading it in 2006 when Casino Royale came out and, and Michael G. Wilson and Barbara Broccoli were talking about how exhausted they were feeling after Die Another Day and how like creatively burnt out they were in the Brosnan era. And in Casino Royale was like, they're getting the juices flowing again thing and they had something to latch on to there with casino royale like what excited them again was saying let's do casino royale we just got the rights to it back i feel like from their perspective until they hand have that new idea i mean it probably doesn't feel like a big long time to them i mean they've been in in this machine for a while um and so i don't know it's very hard to say like even in between other big franchises like you see often like bigger lulls like look how long it was between avatar one and two i mean like Mm -hmm. like franchise filmmaking in general has become more spaced out so it's hard for me to gauge but i would say if we don't really hear movement on the next bond movie by like the start of next year let's say like february march and we're still hearing crickets then i'll start to feel like things are are moving way too slow Mm mm-hmm for me, COVID would be the perfect time to think of a new script. Two, three, you know. Mark, what do you think? As far as, as that, I guess, COVID hiatus time, I mean, I think, I guess I'll ask it to you this way. Do you think that gives almost a pass because there's work stoppage? Or do you think it's like creatively, that's like almost a blessing in disguise? I guess maybe you shouldn't say it that way, but you know what I'm getting at. Yeah, I think it's it's kind of a mix in between. I think what Ryan said there about, you know, when it's when you have that copy of the Blu-ray, that's when their marketing, that everything in terms of the film and its production is wrapped up when it it's Blu-rays, which is what, six months after cinema release. Mm-hmm. I think the thing the thing is took COVID and that period of our lives, those those few years warped into a very strange sense of how time was passing and the thing is whilst they may have wrapped shooting at the end of 2019 with an early I think it was in April 2020 I think was going to be the original launch kind of, mm-hmm. kind of cinematic yep. release obviously we all went into lockdowns around the world by the point and the thing is I think we need to remember as well is that they were actively managing that throughout lockdown you know that wasn't just bond related issue that was cinema in general producers around the world were having to actively manage the release of their movies cinemas being closed it was costing them a million dollars a month to have that on the shelf so Mm -hmm. that's a massive undertaking in its so throughout covid throughout the lockdowns right up until release and post-release they were still actively busy with every element of that film managing it released getting everything lined up for when the cinemas could open. And don't forget, it was it was delayed a few times through lockdown. Yep. And then you've got the marketing that you've got to ramp again. So they were still busy with that. So I don't think in terms of them starting work on Bond 26, I think in that sense, yes, they get passed because everything was still going on with No Time to Die. They won't have had the chance to hire writers, whether it be Purvis and Wade again for Bond 26, who knows? But that wouldn't have been at the forefront of their minds. And I doubt writers would have just started working on stuff for free during lockdown as well. Um, So it's really, really tricky. I think it's not ideal, obviously, that there's been such a delay. But at the same time, if you think that really it's been two years since the release of No Time to Die, say a year and a half since... Uh, since the Blu-ray was released and that's kind of fully when they could put that to bed. So we're what, an, a year and a half into into the actual time frame of them not having anything new coming through? I right. think it's about bearable. And I think, yeah, give it another six months. I would hope to see something. 
But I think the other issue is that they've just painted themselves into a corner now. You know, they have to think directly do they want the franchise to go and, you know, who do they bring on board to shepherd that, to steer the ship? Um, again, I'm back to it being the director will be the first person that we hear about before we hear casting, before we hear title, script, anything. It'll be director. So I would hope within the next six months we'll have something. That's, so, that's my take on it. No, that's a very good point. I mean, and, and when you look at it from the Blu-ray perspective, a year and a half does not seem that bad. But I think, and Joe, I'll ask you this, with the multiple delays of the film, so now we're just kind of like, itching for this to come out we know what's coming I mean, we're seeing trailers that pretty much paint the picture of this film two and a half minute long trailers you're kind of like okay I'm, I'm getting a sense of the plot here maybe a little too much do you think that is making it worse on fans like us and then of course just this fact of the way the end the movie ended in general is like another cherry on top and then toss in the fact that we're in the middle of you know uh, this hiatus with no bond actor at all. Mm. I, I think um, a, a few things is that I want to touch on. Cause you guys said a lot of good stuff. Um, a, I think you guys are being very forgiving and very understanding of, of a lot of the, the, the time that it's taking. And I think, again, I'm, I'm the crusty old man of this course. I'm for damn sure. But I'll, you know, it's funny. I forget who said it, but yes, we, we kind of, think about where we were at times in our life based on bond films sometimes and i definitely do that for sure and you know one of the ways that i that i sort of have unofficially measured in my own mind the time just in the craig era alone i have a nephew and my nephew was a toddler when casino royale came out in fact maybe not even so I sort of used that as a gauge because I kept trying to bring him to all the new Craig films. You know, so he was a little guy when Casino came out, when, you know, when Quantum came out, he was just starting to perk up and say, what is this Bond stuff? And I was, you know, Ooh, well, let me show you. Mm -hmm. And I took him to see, I believe, Skyfall and then Spectre. By the time No Time to Die comes around, he's already... He's discovered girls. He's got a car. I mean, he's, I can't get him, you know, to, to sit down with, with his, with his uncle and watch a James Bond movie anymore. I mean, that's how long the Craig era was sort of dragged out. Right. Um, so, it, so I do find it frustrating. I do sympathize. I mean, obviously COVID, like you said, was sort of part of that, but I, 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 I I'm sort of envisioning the powers that be just going, Boy, thank God for that COVID because now we can't get yelled at for that part. At least now we can relax a little bit and not have to. Uh, so, yeah, it, you know, again, it is painful just to sort of sit around and watch. And and, and incidentally, in, in terms of what I think we can expect first, certainly before we hear an actor, we're going to hear a director, et cetera. But I'm still sort of of the opinion that I think the whole – the relationship now between Eon and Amazon, I think it sort of adds another layer. I'm mm -hmm. still sort of at the, at the point where I don't know if that's going to impact, you know, or how it's going to impact the future of, of films. Uh, I mean, for example, this new TV show that we're seeing trailers for, which I do think looks interesting. And I like the fact that, um, and again, if you asked me a year or so ago what I would think about a show like this, like would this, would I get excited? Would I not? I probably would have been, I don't know. You know, I'd have to really mm -hmm. see what it is before I can, because I mean, again, it, like anything else, it could go one way or it could go another way. I think it looks interesting. You know, I, I do think that looks kind of interesting. I hope I'm not skipping ahead a little bit. No. But, um, but again, that was sort of, that's an Amazon thing now so so again now i'm watching not only to see if the stuff they give us are, is going to be good but also again how does it affect the bigger picture is this going to slow us down now from getting movies you know are right. people going to be now focused on putting out content as opposed to putting out a new film mm -hmm. so i'm i'm trepidatious watching you know how that unfolds and i think that's going to tell us some things yeah 
you want me to drop in a little bit of potentially unsubstantiated gossip that I heard off the record from a, a friend of a friend in the biz, <laughs> which is when the Amazon merger was happening, what he had heard through the grapevine was that Amazon initially was very excited about the acquisition, as they should be. The MGM was pretty much them acquiring the Bond franchise uh, because there wasn't a lot of other IP they acquired. Mm -hmm. And what they actually asked Eon for, according to this alleged rumor, is uh, a spinoff TV show for LaShawna Lynch. And uh, Eon's response was, we don't really do TV, but we'll let you license uh, for a reality TV show. You can use the Bond brand while we kind of figure out what the next thing is with the movies, which feels plausible to me. Um, again, grain of salt, but that felt like a very plausible narrative for how that kind right. of in the scenes conversation might have gone. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting when you say that because as Joe was talking, I was thinking, you know, maybe once Amazon got the rights, they jumped in and said, how can we make money right off the bat? Because we know how, you know, it's been through the Craig era. And then it's almost like, okay, now that this is getting ready to come out and it's obviously done, and they're already talking about casting for a second season of this show. Is Amazon going to turn around and be like, okay, Eon, like it's, it's time. Like, let's start, you know, we like hold up your end of the bargain type thing. We, we acquired this not to have it sit on the shelf, but to make money and to make bond films. Mm. So, I mean, is, is it a placeholder, you know, because <clears throat> even another thing when Joe was talking, I, when it comes to this show, it never would have crossed my mind to do a show like this. And I'm not, terribly upset about it you know it's something and it'd be really cool if you got some bond brands in there obviously there's bond locations it'd be really really cool if they get to one of these locations and you know lashana lynch is standing there or ben wishaw or whoever and gives them their next clue or whatever it may be but if they were to do some sort of bond tv show i would not be uh thrilled to say the least I, I, not to go out of turn, but yeah, you know, Ryan, as you were saying that, honestly, I wouldn't doubt that at all because it does sort of feel like see, it's, it's, it's an interesting conundrum because I think that I think that Eon needs somebody to come on and sort of hold their hand as they sort of move forward. And I think that's Amazon. And I think it's probably also the reason why we got that documentary about the Bond music and we got the Bond concert. Because I, I could very easily see Eon kind of looking at this and saying this is this is going to solve a lot of big problems, but also create a lot of problems. Because, like you said, Amazon is like, okay, I paid a lot of money for this IP, so I want I want something to show for it. And I could see Eon saying that's all fine, but we're not comfortable. I, I could see them being much more comfortable having them do nonfiction. You know, you can do what you want with Bond if we're talking about a nonfiction project, meaning a documentary or a reality show, et cetera. But the idea of them trying to do like like a Marvel or a Star Wars where you're going to do these like spinoff TV shows, I could very much see Eon saying that, yeah, no, 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 we're not we're not OK with that. Um, mm -hmm. So that, yeah, I could see that being I, I wouldn't doubt if that was that happened exactly the way you described. Yeah. So, Mark, I want to ask you this. Something like Jack Ryan from Amazon. Did you watch that yeah. overseas? Um, I've seen it on my Amazon. I can't actually remember if I've watched it or not. I think I'd have. There was like two series, I think. Yeah. That, yeah. So, like yeah. So, the John Krasinski one. So, that was very good, very um, critically acclaimed. They had four yeah. seasons, I think, in five years if I'm not okay. mistaken, or three seasons in four years, something along those lines. To me, like Joe and Ryan's point, you're trying to get these. Amazon is not in the business of taking their time, maybe to a fault. I mean, even something like Citadel, I think that's an Amazon thing. I think they really like that spy genre. To Ryan's point, I think they really, really loved the acquisition of Bond. I mean, do you feel like a partnership with Amazon – and Eon is more beneficial to, I guess, a Bond fan or, you know, I feel like it's probably not, it's it's almost like uh, pulling Eon out of their comfort zone, if you will. Yeah, well, I mean, 
Amazon didn't buy Eon. You know, they're the studio that produces the movies with Eon. Right. So, I mean, it's a very, very different thing. And I think that's where, as we said, with things like reality show, documentaries and music concert, that's that's one thing where Eon, who've got a vice-like grip over, over the rights, let's let's be honest, and which I think is a good thing. Um, when it comes to the movie side of things, I don't think they're going to be hurried and they're not going to be pushed around, even even by Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, I think the way that they can kind of keep that at bay has been to do things like the television show, the reality show, the music concert, etc. cetera. Um, but I think the worst thing that could happen would be is if Amazon did try to influence the movies to a certain extent, because I think the last thing we'd want to see as well is things go the way that say the star Wars or the Marvel series mm. have done on Disney. Um, you know, you get a couple of really good series, a couple of really great shows to be honest, but there is a lot of dross that is coming out now. And it's this whole kind of fast food approach to making television. Um, I think that's the worst possible outcome for Bond if they try mm -hmm. to do that same thing and push through movies. I'd rather them take their time and come up with something that is of quality than rush it through. Yeah. So are you one of those you'd rather have a f incredible movie every five years than a so-so movie every two? Um, I think three years tops. Three years tops is is how I would like my gaps uh, within right. the franchise. I think um, five years is a bit is a bit much. I mean, granted, this time around that was due to factors beyond control and their goal. Um, but if I look at it from that point of view, then we're we're as I say, a year and a half past when they to to uh, kind of start thinking again. So. Um, yeah, I, I would say three years is a good space. I, I would love to get back to two years if, yeah. if they could, if they could get back to two years, that would be great. Um, but quality over quantity, definitely. Yeah. I, I'm with you on the quality over quantity, but I think it hurts more when you wait and the movie isn't that good as has happened a few times in the Craig era, or at least, mm -hmm. In my case, Spectre was is the one outlier where it felt like we waited a bit, and I was not my it wasn't my favorite Craig film by a long shot. Right, um, and you know that that is the the downside of like the waiting cadence of this is like the longer you wait, the more that movie really has to like hit hard. So if if that and that's the other reason we should say that like Eon waiting is, is a, is a risky strategy in some ways, because the more they wait, the more the anticipation is going to be like bond 26 better be like amazing or else it's going to be, it's going to be a, a weird moment for all of us. If we've waited as long as this for a new bond and it comes out and it's, it's not another golden eye. It's not another casino Royale. It's more of a, I don't know, a living daylights, so to speak, mm -hmm. which is kind of like, okay, we we waited. It's a great movie. It's a great movie, The Living Daylights. I won't have anything bad said. I, I love The Living Daylights. It's in my, it's in my I was going to say, 10. I actually like it too. It's in my top 10 for sure. But I'm just saying like The Living Daylights is not as good as it was. It wasn't like Skyfall. It wasn't a $1 billion box office event that set the world on fire. Uh, but our standard is now kind of Skyfall. It's like, if that movie doesn't become a full event, people are going to kind of be like, uh, I don't know. But do, quick question. Do you think that the way things ended with No Time to Die, has that reset people's expectations though? Because now they've literally got a blank canvas. So the expectation is anything, you know, Person, for, I mean, for me personally, I mean, that's a great question. For me personally, I think it has. And almost to a point where I don't know if I wanted it to. You know, it's like, for me, I joined even just this community. I tell people this story all the time. I got wind of one of the Zoom conference, you know, things. Jumped in there and I saw, you know, like 
the Bond experience, but then I saw being James Bond and I saw Bond suits and I was like, wait a minute, there's a bunch of these people. I was like, why am I not, you know, so I logged out, was like, what's a name? What's a name? And I was like, uh, Bond's apartment, jump back in. I was like, what's up? Joe was like, Hey Luke. And I was like, boom, done. Here I am. So for me, it's like, I was like, there's, there's a ton of us in here and there's, you know, this expectation, like there's a film coming out. So everyone's all excited, you know, and we always talk about it. You see content creators come and go when there's a new movie coming and whatever, but it's like once after, you know, with it getting delayed, I was able to like more than get my feet wet in the bond community per se, because it was such a long period of time from like that operation Phoenix, I believe what it was called all the way until it actually came out, you know? And it's like, once it came out, the first thing I truly thought was like, is this, you know, cause now that Craig's done, I was like, if you look back, Craig, or, you know, I'll say Brazen to the beginning, the sartorial aspect wasn't like it is with the brand collaboration. There was, it's just, it's only gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then I start to think like, okay, so like things like, will there be a premiere at Royal Albert Hall ever again? <laughs> you know, like, will there be all these crazy brands collaborating and all these people finding out what it is and these bond versions of the clothes or whatever it, you know, I was like, will it be like that, but even bigger or will it start to go the other way? Because somebody like Daniel Craig was very involved in the costume design and the production. And, you know, it's like, if it's somebody like Henry Cavill, who yes, will probably absolutely sink his teeth into the role. But do you think he'll be like, Mr. You know, I have, I need a say in all the fashion. I need like, he might just show up and act as best he can and go home. You know, like I, I truly have no idea what expectation even set moving forward for me personally. <laughs> well, that was fun. Good, good. <laughs> well, well, you know, no, it's, it's it's. I I think in so I I do wonder if after doing no die if they've they've kind of shot themselves in the foot a tiny bit because now it's not simply a matter of just for their actor and doing another film. They mm -hmm. really have to reinvent everything, and to mm -hmm. to the point where they're even probably saying, "Are we going to set the next film in?" in the modern world or are we actually going to do period films like that's how yeah. much how wide open they've sort of left things because they really do have to reinvent everything all over again um and money penny q how do we do that like they have to start all that over again um and in terms of how often would i like to see a film again i kind of feel like we're really being generous and saying you know Four years, five years. I mean, I, I was sitting here kind of pulling up on my phone to say, what year did Iron Man come out? What year was the first Avengers? What year was Endgame? I mean, mm -hmm. from Iron Man to Endgame was 10 years. I mean, we're talking about these people created like a universe of characters and a universe of different films to all come together in an epic conclusion to, to that era. And again, we're saying, could we just get one Bond film that's that's good? You know, mm -hmm. like we're, I don't think we're asking for a whole lot if we say three years tops, guys. I mean, honestly, I, I, I agree we'll probably never get back to the days of getting it every two years. <laughs> but I mean, good Lord, three is it is three years enough, guys? Um, right. But also that brings me back to, you know, I remember f for the longest time from the as soon as no time to die, as soon as the credits rolled. People were saying, "When do you think we'll see the next the next Bond film?" And you know, I said pretty much from the get go, it really depends. If Barbara and Michael hang on to it, then just get your favorite blanket and a comfortable chair and a cocktail, bust out all the old films, and just just get to work and right. enjoy those for a while. Um, if somebody comes along and and purchases the the IP see something pretty quick and i sort of feel like you know and i did sort of preface and say or it could be something that falls in the middle there in which case who knows i sort of feel like that's where we are where eon sort of th threw one leg over the fence 
and now they're stuck. Like we were saying before about it. Now Amazon is saying, okay, we need to put out content. And they're like, hold your horses. We're, we don't know what we're going to do yet. You know? Right. So there's going to be this tug of war now, you know, where we're kind of getting content, kind of not, kind of still stuck in the middle of nowhere with, 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 you know, with not much news, et cetera. So honestly, I feel like it, it does put us back in that situation where all the analysis in the world leaves us kind of like, I don't know, you know, just, mm -hmm. who knows? Yeah. If that makes sense. It, yeah. Perfect sense. I mean, I, I like even, you know, I think Mark, this will really hit home for you, obviously, is Skyfall. The marketing around Skyfall was just an unbelievable event around the UK. And obviously you had the Olympics, you had Skyfall. It was just this perfect storm. But talk about like setting a standard, you know, even just you went from Quantum to Skyfall and even the caliber of the cast you know, now you've got an Oscar winning director, you've got Oscar winning villain, you've got, you know, Judy Dench, obviously still, but now you've, you're talking like Daniel Craig is doing something that, yes, anybody would be in a Bond film, but there has been people that have turned down Bond films, you know, Anthony Hopkins, whoever you want to say. But now it was like Daniel Craig is not only reinventing this character and attracting virtually anybody that it seems like they wanted to be in the film. But then it's like you've got directors coming back again. You've got villains coming back for small roles. You know, whether that small part was good or not, that's up for debate. But now it's like and, you know, there's these stories about I think the infamous story was Daniel Craig getting drunk at a party and asking Javier Bardem to be in Skyfall. But it was pretty much that simple for him to be in it. Now it's like moving forward. I, I can't really think of an actor that's going to have that sway on other casting. Wasn't that how Danny Boyle got pulled in too? Wasn't Craig out with drinks with Danny Boyle and Danny Boyle pitched some idea and then Craig was like, let's, let's, uh, let's get you in there. I'm just, I, that amount of sway was enormous. Yeah. See that I don't know. Cause I thought Boyle got let go because he didn't want to kill Bond. Was that, that was the rumor. Yeah. That was the rumor. So I'm not entirely the rumor sure, at but... the time was that he, he he went because he wanted to kill Bond. Then it turned out that actually happened in the film. And then the rumor was like reversed. But at the end of the day, no one knows why he left. Yeah. It's still creative differences. Well, um, surprise, I, surprise. That's... Enter our fifth yeah. guest, Danny Boyle. <laughs> All right, mate. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think... Um, like they literally have a blank canvas going forward. I think whoever they're going to bring in to direct is going to obviously work very closely finding the right actor to work with. But in terms of delays as well, I could almost, I could accept it more if they were taking more of a Marvel approach in the sense of, and before anyone shoots me, mm -hmm. in the sense <laughs> of, if we're working out a 10 or 15 year timeline of movies and what they wanted the new actor to do over the course of four movies, that takes time to work out. So that's yeah. that's one thing I think Marvel did get right in the in that sequence of 10 years. They had so many movies coming out, you know, that all kind of intertwined. And as Joe said, it all came together at that end game. Um you know, no pun intended. Um, if they can do something like that with Bond going forwards, where even if it's a three-film three, three film deal, like there's always been the rumours of Nolan coming on and doing a, a trilogy like he did with The Dark Knight. I could accept it more of a delay if it was going to be something like that. But if it's going to be just one movie going to the next and then in the second movie they're trying to shoehorn bits from the first that right. you know which is what we had it felt like we had over the the last few films like these threads that apparently were there from the beginning and thought of from the beginning that just clearly weren't i think you know it's interesting i think whoever comes on to as actor next obviously won't have the same level necessarily of influence or or pull over mm -hmm. decision making and i think maybe that needs it just needs an actor to come on to have fun with the role to to you know to put 
give everything that they've got into this role and have fun with it. It would be great to have a bit more fun as well. That's very well said, because I think in doing that, I think that actually loosens up the timeline a little bit and uh, doesn't make it so drawn out. And, you know, there's not the actor's just acting. He's showing up. He's acting. He's being being the character and he's, you know, not phoning it in in any way, shape or form. More of a Brosnan thing. I mean, very, very well said. Do you think and I'll ask you guys this. Do you think that, you know, obviously Quantum was somewhat of a continuation you know they kind of say it is there's bits and pieces whatever skyfall was kind of its own thing then they get the rights to specter they're trying to tie everything together no time to die something similar do you think they're influenced by something like marvel during the the craig era they're kind of seeing how well marvel is intertwining the universe and they're trying to do something the same so they can kind of make it its own chapter or or, or, you know, or do you think they're just trying to stick to their own thing and kind of just trying to pull bits and pieces? I think it's been a hodgepodge because I think if you look at the creative story of each movie they were doing, they were kind of really figuring things out as they went. I, I think the Nolan Bat films were probably a bigger influence on how they were approaching this era than the Marvel movies exactly. And I, mm-hmm. I think... They kind of wanted that resonance. I think the big problem with the back half of the Daniel Craig era is that Craig kept trying to leave, right? So we found out that he wanted to leave after Skyfall. He wanted to leave and then it was too big. And then they had to bring him and Sam Mendes back because it was so, so successful. Um, He wanted to leave after Spectre and then they didn't really want to let him go after that. And so they gave him all the time he needed to come back and do No Time to Die. And that kind of... That's kind of why like each of those movies feel like they're kind of like an encapsulation by the time you get to the end point. And it, it that to me feels like more than anything they're trying to, in each of those movies, kind of like encapsulate the character and pull from the Nolan movies in their own way. Um, I think each of those three movies feel very Nolan to me in, in different aspects. Um, but I think I want to give them credit. Like if you read the, the excellent, uh, everything or nothing book about the making of the bomb movies. It was very clear from the outset that they were trying with Casino Royale to create a series that would sequentially move on. Like they envisioned Casino Royale as being the first part of a two-parter from the get-go. Mm-hmm. Purvis and Wade were already writing the sequel when they were working on Casino Royale. So like that was always intended to be kind of a cliffhanger that was going to immediately lead into a car chase with Mr. White in the boot. Like that was yeah. always the vision. So I think in in the back of their mind, there must have been conversations when Casino Royale was going on that like this was going to be a coherent story. The problem is they probably they didn't really like stick to it. But I'm, I, I understand why they kept coming back to it with every movie where they were like, this is our original idea was that this would be a coherent story. Let's try to make it a coherent story. The problem mm-hmm. was they really never sat down and plotted out how that would organically work. Right. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting point too. Yeah, go ahead, Joe. I just to, just to build on what you guys are saying. I I remember you reminding me that one of my biggest frustrations with Spectre. I I remember watching this film, saying to myself, "Why does it feel like they're scrambling to throw together a, a story that's been building up over over time?" When in fact, the at least the first and second films were doing exactly that. Like mm-hmm. the whole point of the first and second one was that they were building up to this idea that there was some bigger, you know, uh, organization behind all of these things. And then when you got to Spectre, it was almost like they completely forgot that and thought they just came up with this idea five minutes ago and are now right. scrambling to sort of put together this idea that this was all built. That was the whole point of the first thing. So, uh, yeah, I, I hope, Mark, to sort of and just step off of what you were saying too. I really hope that once they start get started again and then really do start to put together the groundwork for the next few films. I would really love it if whether it's a trilogy, four films, maybe even five films, again, it doesn't, it, not that they have to play in every detail out from the get go and stick with that, but at least have a, 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 a groundwork set up so that you're not doing bond is over the hill and needs to retire by the third film. You, you know, like at yeah. least you, you know, in advance, you're going to, space that out a little bit you know so you, so you you know where you are in the by the time you're in the second third or fourth installment yeah 
I think uh, I think Spectre, for me, to to your point, Joe. I mean, a lot of people liked Quantum. Some did not. It's grown on me a lot over the years. I'm guilty of it's new, so I like it regardless. No Time to Die was an exception, but <laughs> for me, it's like I think Spectre. Ironically enough, I mean, you look at it and you think. So you're telling me Blofeld went down into the MI6 headquarters with some scotch tape and some printed out pictures of every villain Craig's ever faced and taped him up. Like that's where it's kind of <laughs> like, it's like a, an irony and like you guys are trying really hard here to do something you've kind of already accomplished because you, you continued whether quantum's your favorite or your least favorite, they continued fairly well from casino to quantum and wrapped up the Vesper thing with a nice little bow at the end of Quantum, and then went completely independent with Skyfall and created a new storyline. And from Skyfall to Spectre, they could have done an, yet another standalone, and then No Time to Die, yet another standalone, but they tried to tie this whole thing together. I mean, mm -hmm. and Joe, it's a great point too, kind of like what Mark said. You've got the Star Wars and Marvel thing, like Mark brought up, but then Joe... To your point, that what Marvel's been able to accomplish since what? I think Iron Man, was it 2008? Mm -hmm. Iron Man? Yeah. So you've got what they've accomplished, but then there is that. I, I usually put Star Wars in the middle ground, and I did have a video with David on this. You've got Bond is the ultimate low end of content. Marvel's the super, super high end, and then Star Wars is in the middle because with Marvel... Marvel's gotten to the point where there's so many movies and so many shows. I haven't seen most of them past like the second Guardian of the Galaxy or something. Like I think I've seen Hawkeye, but I haven't seen Loki. I haven't seen most of them. And it's like Star Wars, I can keep up a little more, but they might be heading into that direction. It's like, where would you guys like to see Bond? And we can say we can say shows aside, but you know, and Joe, one of the points I wanted to bring up because I think you and I have touched on this before. Your childhood bond was Roger Moore, correct? Not to not to date you. Thank you, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. It is. <laughs> so I looked at it and I knew, you know, with Sean and with Roger, it was every two years, like clockwork. But then before doing this, I did my homework. It was every two years with Brosnan, except for be between the world is not enough and die another day. It was like three. Yeah. So it was even when. I was a kid. It was every two years, and then you throw in video games. So it was like there's always something happening. And I've told this story a million times, but I remember going to the airport with my parents, and they had all the die cast, die another day toys at the airport. It was just, it was everywhere here. You know, it was everywhere all the time. Mm. And then there was that four year gap in between die another day and casino. But then to Ryan's point, with that kind of, continuation and joe's point it was only two years between casino and quantum then they went to four then three and then six between specter and no time to die and if you take away COVID, it's still like four it's like mm -hmm. the highest in the longest hiatus period mm -hmm. and i think you know do we feel like they had a lot to do with craig at that point other work and just not feeling it because i think We've seen Barbara and Michael loved and adored Craig, and they wanted him. They would have had him do four more if they could. So is this a Craig thing? Why we're kind of seeing this increase and in gap? I so I'm trying to remember, and, and maybe Joe can, and Mark could weigh in and correct me. But I think with Skyfall, there was a little bit of legal trouble with MGM that delayed things a mm -hmm. little bit, and I that there was a little bit of something going on there. And then the primary explanation they gave for the delay of Spectre was they were waiting for Sam Mendes to want to come back to it for whatever okay. reason. Um, but, I mean, the delay between Spectre and Skyfall was like 110. I mean, the delay between Spectre and No Time to Die was 110% Craig, right? right. And, I, I, and I, almost, I honestly want to give blame a little bit to Craig for Sam Mendes too, because it's like Sam Mendes was a Craig partnership like that mm -hmm. that kind of like being very protective of that creative relationship was it was a uh, a thing that he was reluctant wasn't he to do specter sam mendez from what i remember 
I don't think he entirely wanted to do Spectre. I think so. Yeah. 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 So I, 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 I'll chime in on the, you know, I, I think that if the question is who's to blame for the delays, is it Eon? Is it Daniel Craig? I will pretty much say, I think it's clearly both. Um, Craig certainly didn't help. And I think Craig was more than happy to just delay and, and not jump back into it very quickly. Um, but I, I also feel that like when you hear Daniel Craig says everyone is very tired, I think he's probably right. I think it's him. I think it's the powers that be. I think it's Michael and Barbara. And quite frankly, if it was just Daniel Craig, then we probably would have more news about Bond 26. I think if mm -hmm. it was simply a matter of waiting till Craig was gone and then getting back into the swing of things, we, we'd, we'd be back into the swing of things. Um, so, yeah, I think it's definitely kind of everybody involved, really. Yeah. So last thing I'll ask is as content okay. creators. No, please go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, just to add to that as well, I think Joe's hit it on the on the nail on the head in that I think, I wouldn't say blame it, but yeah, it's a combination of both. I think the delays were a combination of both, obviously timelines and things working out with Craig and Barbara. But I mean, Barbara produced five movies outside of Bond between Spectre and No Time to Die. She doesn't just do Bond. She's got her own passion projects outside of that as well. I mean, that... Mm. Plays also as well. has to be taken into account. Um, plays exactly, uh, you know, producing other works and not just on, um, which adds can add potentially to to any delay that we see. So just something to bear in mind as well. Mm. Yeah, you know, the rhythm section, which I've still not actually seen the rhythm section, uh, and I think it had mixed reviews. Uh, but that's kind of another espionage type um, movie. I think believe um yeah but yeah yeah i mean obviously very valid very valid i mean i i think it's people kind of forget that point and it's it's a very good point to bring up mark is that you know mm -hmm. they do other projects um i mean i guess piggyback off that do you feel like we could i guess realistically do you feel like the next announcement we could get and and i'll, I'll word it this way percentage wise how high of a percentage that the next announcement we could get would actually just be barbara and michael stepping away selling you know we're, we're just that was it that's it for us you would have heard it by now but I, I think i think they would have said something by now they wouldn't have just kept people waiting i think they still want to do bond i think they just don't know which direction to take it mm -hmm. what do you think ryan I have a tinfoil hat theory on on this, uh, and we can all we can all take it with a grain of salt. But I I think for for Barbara and Michael, this is their golden eye. This is kind of like the moment where like Albert R. Broccoli was golden eye was Albert R. Broccoli giving the franchise off to the next set and kind of saying like leaving it in good hands and kind of getting ready to 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 move away from it. I think. Whether it's Greg Wilson or I'm not saying Eon as an entity would walk away from from Bond, but I I think in terms of the direct personal connection, Michael G. Wilson is just getting very old. So I I think in that way it seems like it's the time for for Greg to kind of step into the picture or someone else to that effect. And I I feel like from the outside it seems like Barbara Broccoli's Bond was very much the Craig era, and that was her personal statement for what she was going to do with bond i feel like whatever comes next like they would shepherd off bond to make sure that bond is in a, a relatively solid place for the next run but my tinfoil hat theory is like this is this is kind of a slight changing of the guard whatever happens with the next really run. okay joe what do you think of that uh ryan i will i will share your tinfoil hat and i will i i i I kind of feel like maybe this is the thing that I've maybe been terrified to say all along, but I, if I had to take a guess, I would say that is probably the next thing to happen is that Michael and I, I don't see, I don't see the team of Barbara and Michael 
setting out to make a, another series of films. I, I think if you asked them, do you have one more in you? They might say, well, possibly. But I think they both kind of are well aware that whatever happens next, it's not a single film. It's going to be a, mm -hmm. a series of films yeah. with a new actor, et cetera, et cetera. So I do suspect that they might be very gun shy about taking that on. Um, but the other thing is, and kind of relating to the problem I said earlier about them sort of being stuck on the fence between Amazon and, and holding on to things, uh, I think they are also probably pretty gun shy about, well, who do we hand this off to then? You know, I, I think a lot of us have sort of been saying for years, again, looking at the success of Marvel, saying, well, who, who would the Kevin Feige be to sort of jump mm -hmm. in? and take on this responsibility and kind of know bond and love bond and understand bond you know who would we all feel pretty confident that that person would be able to do that um i don't know that i have any names really and i think yeah. quite frankly if i'm barbara broccoli and i'm looking at the um maybe i shouldn't use this word but the debacle of george lucas handing things off to kathleen kennedy and seeing how that how that's sort of transpired i'd be a little terrified and be thinking boy i mean you know you think you're going to hand it off to somebody who's going to you know take care of your legacy and and really kind of nurture it and see it through to its next stages and all of a sudden it just goes off the rails you know mm -hmm. you know again say what you want about star wars everybody's got their opinion and mine's only as good as the next as whatever but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think that's the problem is is I, I think the next step is difficult. And, and and again, compound that with no time to die and how that left off. And again, getting back to the idea that the next movie isn't just another actor just doing the same old, same old. You have to reinvent everything from scratch. So that's a pretty big undertaking. And I, I don't know that they'd be willing to do that. But yeah. I also don't think they're willing to give it away either. So, yeah. I think which kind of, you know, all great points. I think that even that statement there kind of feeds right into Mark's point. You know, if they if they really wanted to cut ties, they just would have done it. You know, it's right. more so yeah. we don't really want to. But like, how do we move forward? Yeah. One thing Amazon I will say is, I, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, Mark. No, no, no. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Oh, I was just going to say, if they had wanted to walk, Amazon would have would have cut them a check. There is there's there's no question. I, mm. I, I, mm. possibly yeah one thing that was interesting around the 60th anniversary there obviously there was a, a series of events that took place over here in the uk at the bfi the um, british film institute and um over the course of about three four days leading up to the concert but one person who was present pretty much at each of the talks or discussions that took place someone that i wasn't familiar with was greg wilson so he was definitely being kind of promoted kind of front and set front and center mm -hmm. with his presence in that sense and it did make me think at the time is this the direction of things going you know this is in effect this is success that we're going to be seeing over the next movie or two at most um it's finding that direction of who who's going to take on the ranks and um whether that's Barbara staying involved or Greg stepping up to kind of take on the reins from Michael or whether it's going to be a partnership with with them and a potential director um who knows I think it's definitely going to be within the next movie or two that we see a clear succession taking place yeah yeah that's interesting I mean I would say I think best case scenario is a family member for sure you know, I could see like with Michael's age, him kind of stepping back, Greg coming in, Barbara staying on for a film or two to kind of really, you know, soft transfer that whole thing over and then, um, you know, see a whole new era. So I guess the last thing I'll ask you guys as content creators, you know, we've got, we'll start with Ryan, newest channel, I think around right now, analyzes Mr. Bond, a few videos. How does this time period affect the content you create? Does is it difficult to find things to talk about? Is there a 
you know, swirl of negativity in your brain, you know, or are you rejuvenated? Are you excited? Where, where's your head space? That's a really interesting question. I, my, my channel in particular is kind of retrospective in its, in its outlook in terms of, I've, I've been part of the bond community since I was, I, I don't know, uh, like in my early teens on the internet, looking at rumors for what would be the world is not enough. Like, I've mm -hmm. I've been in the game a long time, so I have a lot of thoughts that I'm I'm happy to put out into the digital ether, uh, in in video form that I'm kind of excited to be out there. But I I, I mean, th the anxiety I have is that at a certain point there's just going to be so much like it's we're let's put it this way: if we have another global James Bond day like the global James Bond day we just had, like it's a year nothing has changed there's like maybe a trailer for the project 007 video game of some kind or something like that when we we get to global james bond day next year like i think just in general engagement i uh, might start to dip i i i share the enthusiasm that the bond community is like becoming more of a thing this was my first ever gather all this year that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons that i was inspired to start a channel because it's it's meeting these people and in, including folks like you wonderful gentlemen and and talking about bond it kind of energized my enthusiasm for for the character again yeah. and talking about the character again but I, I at a certain point there needs to be some fuel for the fire and it doesn't seem like anything short of a of a new film will really will really do that so i have some anxiety on that but i i in the interim, I think I have plenty to talk about, and I, I love to hear. I love the sound of my own voice enough that I, <laughs> I think we all do. I think we all do. So, Mark, I'll go to you next. So, you've got a unique perspective. Same questions, but you've got the British James Bond fan club, which are a huge part of, which is doing great things. You're obviously in the UK. You've been doing your channel for a couple years now, like I have. Where do you sit on it? So, with you, it's you've got. The fan club aspect, you've got the fact that you're in, you know, the hotbed of Bond, and then your channel is a little more seasoned. How does it affect you a time period like this? Um, it's interesting because obviously with with the with the club, we obviously have events. So I'm I'm getting to create pieces around that, whether it's interviews or coverage. Um, so that's always interesting and it's great you know, seeing people come together in those environments at like a, like a gather or, you know, getting people together is, is the best mm -hmm. thing in the world. When you get all together and you've got nine Bond girls and John Glenn and, you know, a stuntman in, in Paul Weston and John Marino, um, it's better. But um, yeah, from that point of view, it's great to, to, to kind of be able to create the content that is around the community. That's the best way to put it. You know, it is all purely 100 percent community based and, and what's going on um within my own channel i kind of dip in and out of of things whether it's you know doing an unboxing because i've i've saved up and bought something new that i've been coveting for a while or whether it's going to bonhams and checking out the wonderful lots that were coming up for auction in the sir roger moore collection um it kind of feels slightly in a holding pattern as well whilst we're waiting for news and the the kind of starting gun to be fired on Bond 26. But I think my approach to Bond 26 and the coverage that I want to be offering is going to be very different. This mm -hmm. will be the first, this will be the first movie from a pre-production starting gun being fired that I want to try and cover. Um, you know, I didn't do that with No Time to Die. I, my first video online was uh spectre related back in 2015 so i'm excited for that i'm excited for what come basically at the minute we're kind of waiting 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 a little bit more and then getting excited over a trailer for a tv show but still waiting um but i'm excited for for what's to come yeah definitely yeah okay joe last but not least so with you being james bond i believe is almost 17 years old i believe it'll be 17 in a very short amount of time yeah which is insane so for you oh, wow. 
and huge congratulations on that. I mean, the, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Like the 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 Godfather himself. So <laughs> with something like that, I mean, your channel, you've got. I was actually looking before I even kind of thought up this video. You've got videos with two, 250, 300,000 views. You've got review videos. You've got review podcasts. I mean, you've talked about all the films in depth to, you know, incredible videos with a lot of eyes on these videos. You've had a lot of guests. For you, something like this, is it just kind of, you know what? I've, I've dealt with the whole Craig thing. I've had the podcast throughout the whole Craig era. Is this something you're kind of used to by now? You know, the days of a new film every two years are in the rear view or are you even still having done this for almost 17 years? Are you even still at the same place we kind of are with like, we're still itching for, for more. Yeah, I would say, yeah, the answer to that is a wholeheartedly yes. Well, first of all, I should say as a content creator and as somebody who has been doing this for 17 years, I should be absolutely ashamed of myself for the abysmal lighting that I had for this pot, for this uh, video. So I apologize wholeheartedly. I, 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 I kind of was just, I grabbed the free office and I was sitting down and as I'm watching the sun go down and now I'm sitting here in the dark, I was thinking, oh yeah, I, I really didn't think this through. So I'm sorry about that. Okay. Uh, I really should have known better. Um, but yeah, I, I, I am definitely in the same I, the part of me. It does sort of look at the road behind me a little more than I'm looking at the road in front of me sometimes. And I do sort of say to myself, you know, again, ha having done this for as long as I have, you know, boy, I'm, it's going to be hard to be clever when I feel like I've said every every last little nugget of of, of cleverness that I have about every single movie so far. Um, but I, I am absolutely very much excited for the future. And I do think that even though now, like like Mark said, and, and like Ryan said, we are in this just sort of in this waiting pattern. Um, and, you know, I think once we do start to get news, I think the cork will really pop. And mm -hmm. I think that vacuum, you know, will be filled very quickly. And all of a sudden, we're going to be right back on that train. And again, because it's going to be kind of a brave new world in terms of where this franchise goes. I mean, like I said, I literally don't even know when the next film would be set. I haven't a clue what the mood of the film will be. Is it going to be really serious? Is it going to be light and airy and fun? Um, so yeah, it, there's a. I feel like this one, maybe more, more than ever, frankly, could be the a more one of the most exciting periods that we've ever had because we're we're really starting from scratch. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'm very much excited for the future. Um, I do think it, it's going to be a little, again, the, the waiting period will be a little tough to sort of get through. But again, unlike most franchises, we have so much to look back on. We've got books, we've got films, we've got 25 films. Uh, I mean, I'm still sort of talking about the last one, like it just came out, it came out yesterday. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it's, we're extremely fortunate, like, I, I think we really should just invite Michael and Barbara to the next gather all. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden they will snap right back into it and be very excited to, to put another film together, frankly. Yeah. It's a, a darkest before the dawn kind of thing. I think you're looking Absolutely. At. Yes. I, I, I think at some point it's just all of a sudden it's going to click and, and we're all going to be back in the saddle doing all of this, you know, brainstorming and predictions and, and what do we think of this? And, analyzing every little 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 morsel that they give us right well if my sources are correct and you know us we have people everywhere tomorrow should be the 17th anniversary of being james bond if my sources are correct i think it's november 12th i think you might be right actually so and massive congratulations it is november 12th wow good cheers brother thank you for that there you go <laughs> yeah so it's yep yep long time congratulations it's a pleasure thank you, thank you all three of you guys for doing this um hopefully next time the three of us talk it won't be you know i mean i want to say we'll have more news but then that could be like a year from now and i hope that's not the case so i appreciate you guys doing it ryan mark joe thank you guys thanks luke always fun thanks luke a pleasure